What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, well today's video is gonna be a bit shorter than I usually do, but I guess that's okay. You guys have a lot of stuff to do. But I did come across an article that was talking about a study that was conducted a couple years ago, but it's still pretty interesting for us. So, first of all, are you a runner of marathons? You very well could be if you're watching this channel. Also, have you ever done an Ironman triathlon? Yes? No. Well, whether you've run a marathon or you've completed an Ironman triathlon or you're thinking about doing one or the other, I came across an article in Canadian Running Magazine. And the article is titled, Is Marathon Training Harder Than Ironman Training? The study says yes. So guys, I know it's hard to believe, but apparently it's more difficult to train for a marathon than it is to train for an Ironman. That's a 2.4 mile swim, 112 miles on the bike, and a full marathon. But it's more difficult to train for a full marathon than it is to train for a full marathon at the end of an Ironman. And I'm gonna explain why. Oh, and this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes. And I definitely wanna hear about those setbacks. So go ahead and let me know about your week of running in the comments below. Okay, let's get into this. So it doesn't seem intuitive, does it? Doesn't seem intuitive that it's more difficult to train for a marathon than it is an Ironman, when an Ironman actually includes a marathon. But a study in Spain did a comprehensive analysis and they used 15 runners and 15 triathletes. Now all the athletes were matched, so they were fairly even. I mean, they were matched for age, weight, height, fitness, as in their VO2 max, training experience, and even race performances. So the researchers matched them as a percentage of their winning times, which is pretty good. That's a pretty good group of participants, even though it is a pretty small study with only 15 runners and 15 triathletes. So before the study began, the researchers performed exercise tests in order to give them training zones that they were going to follow during their training program. The participants were then followed by the researchers for 16 weeks prior to a goal race. And all their activities, all their training that goes into that training for a goal race was measured and quantified. Now, of course, this is where some of you are going to say, Matt, how are you measuring what makes something more difficult? Because if we measure for time, it's pretty obvious that triathletes are going to put more time into their training than marathoners. Mainly because triathletes put more time into their races than do marathoners. But the researchers took this into account and they used the objective load scale. And this objective load scale allows the researchers to compare the different activities from the different athletes. But obviously the triathletes are going to be doing some running because they do have to run a marathon and the marathoners are probably going to be doing some running too. But with the objective load scale, the researchers are able to compare swimming and cycling against running. Okay, so we've already talked about about how the triathletes are going to be training a lot more than the marathoners. And this turned out to be remarkably true. Not just true, but remarkably true. In fact, the triathletes train for a total of 206.7 hours compared to the marathoners 84.3 hours. Let's break that down a little more. The triathletes train for an average of 12.9 hours a week and the marathoners train for an average of 5.2 hours a week. So when we break that weekly training amount, the hours, down into the objective load scale, we get a load rating of 834.1 for the triathletes and 526 for the marathoners. So still, the triathletes are clearly putting more load into their training than the marathoners. I don't know go anywhere. And you know it, there's a big butt coming. The researchers then looked at ratios to compare how that time and training that was put into triathlon or just running in relation to the time spent during the competition. And in competition, the average finishing time of the triathletes was 11 hours and 45 minutes, where the marathoners, their average finish time for the marathon was three hours and six minutes. This means that the training load per hour was substantially higher for the marathoners than it was for the triathletes. So again, let's go back to the objective load scale. And when we break down their effort that they put into their training, the marathoners had an objective load scale of 99.3 compared to an objective load scale of 65.8 for the triathletes. And if we break it down a little further, this means that the marathoners have an objective load score of about 1.5 per minute of activity compared to one for the triathletes per minute of activity. Also, the average weekly training load for every minute spent in competition was 2.9 for the marathoners and 1.2 for the triathletes. And also when we look at the amount of time spent in training and compare that to the amount of time spent in competition, we get a score of 1.7 for the marathoners and only 1.1 for the triathletes. So ultimately that means that marathoners spend a greater proportion of both time and training load relative to the time spent competing in the marathon. And let me just break it down just one more way. Triathletes don't spend as much time training and when they do they don't spend as much intensity on that training as marathoners do. So when we go back to the question that was posed at the beginning of the article, is marathon training harder than Ironman training? The answer is yes. Triathletes, begin your rant in the comments below. Oh, with just one more little bit of information, all the athletes' activities were measured very simply as being hard, medium, or easy. And both the runners and the triathletes both had about the same amount of easy workouts. But it was found that the triathletes train more in the medium zone and the runners train more in the high zone. And if we've been paying attention to training practices over the past 10 years, we know polarized training is where it's at. So runners, 
you are clearly better athletes than any of the triathletes out there, despite what the triathletes will tell you. Oh, by the way, I have not actually competed in an Ironman triathlon. I have done several half Ironman triathlons, but now that I know that it's so much easier than training for a marathon, I don't think I'll bother. Okay, I guys had a pretty good week of running. I week started off on Monday, as it usually does with an easy run, and knocked out 7.5 miles, super cruisy, just kind of recovering from my long run the day before. Everything felt good. Tuesday was my first workout day of the week, knocked out a total of 8.6 miles, warmed up for two miles, then I did five one mile repeats with 400 meters recovery in between, and then I cooled down for zero. 0.6 miles. Now my actual workout called for six one mile repeats with 800 meters recovery in between, but I was kind of punching the clock to get to work on time. So I modified it with one less interval and a smaller recovery. It worked out well. Wednesday was my day off. Did nothing at all except ride the peloton. Just some very light activity to recover. And then Thursday was my second workout day of the week and the first day of December. So of course with the first day of December brings all those Strava challenges. So I knocked out 13.3 miles. I warmed up for two miles. Then I did 10 miles at tempo or goal marathon pace which for me I've kind of chosen to be 7.15 a mile which would equate to a 3.10 marathon and then I cooled down for 1.3 miles that was a that was a pretty tough workout at the end of those 10 miles at goal marathon pace I did question if that was my actual goal marathon pace or perhaps I'm being a little too optimistic based on my training but who knows still glad to get that workout in and then the rest of the week was pretty easy running it was 7.4 miles on Friday 7.5 miles on Saturday and 7.6 miles on Sunday bringing my week's total to 51.97 miles which is about 83.6 kilometers so all in all pretty good week down a little bit from last week and the week before but it's all part of the plan for the race coming up all right guys don't forget to let me know about your week of running remember successes and setbacks oh and if you have made it this far in the video why don't you let me know by putting the pawn emoji in the comments that's pawn like the chess piece not prawn like the crustacean anyway be kind be happy run well see you in a couple of days